And the Lord Jesus Christ says, I am coming quickly. You must strongly hold. Exert your forceful strength, holding what you have. That word of God and the word that they were receiving from the Lord Jesus Christ. Why would they want to strongly hold it? For the purpose and result that not one person may receive your crown. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ wants his people to stay put on the word of God, which is also what the Lord Jesus Christ is communicating. He wants them to stand firm, to maintain it, be observant of it, and not to be tempted and go away from it. But he wants them to stay put, and so they would receive a crown as a garland. They would win, win the race, receive the prize, and he continues and he says, the person being victorious, that one who has the victory, who gains the victory, conquering, I will make him a pillar in the interior temple of my God. Now, not a literal temple of, you know, stone or masonry, but this is referring to someone who would be a firm support within the community of the interior interior temple of God, that innermost part of God's temple. And he may never yet go outside. He would not leave at any time. And I will write on him, identifying this person, this victorious person, how with the name of my God, designating him as belonging to God and living within God's authority his spirit realm, and the name of the city of my God. That is designating that person as being a citizen belonging to the city of my God. That, of course, is referring to the new Jerusalem. And in fact, the Lord Jesus Christ clarifies that, and he says, which is the new Jerusalem, the Jerusalem that is newly made, emphatically and specifically that one that is descending out from heaven. The new Jerusalem is not on earth yet. It will not come on earth until Revelation chapter 21. So the Lord Jesus Christ was talking about something that is still future for these people who are being victorious. And he said, the person being victorious, I will make him a pillar in the interior temple of my God, and he may never go outside. And I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is the new Jerusalem, emphatically and specifically the one that is descending out from heaven from my God. And also he would write on him, my name, that's the Lord Jesus Christ's name. I will also put on him my name, the new name, the new name that the Lord Jesus Christ is given. And he continues and says, the person having an ear must hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Again, we understand it is to pay attention to what you hear. In fact, the words that John wrote down in this book of Revelation. The person having an ear must pay attention, attentively listen, hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Let's continue with Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 to 22. John continues writing the words from the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says to the angel of the church in Laodicea. Laodicea was a city located about 40 miles southeast of Philadelphia. And so to the angel of the church of Laodicea, you, John, must write, the certain one. Here the Lord Jesus Christ calls himself the certain one, the one who is sure, the Amen. All the promises of God are certain 
sure amen through the Lord Jesus Christ. He calls himself the certain one and the witness. The Lord Jesus Christ is the witness. He attests with the information that he has. He makes it known. He is also the believer. The Lord Jesus Christ believes the information that God gives him to believe. He is the believer. He is the true one. The Lord Jesus Christ has that quality of trueness. He is genuine. He's not a copy. He is genuine. He is the true one. He is also the beginning of the creation of God. He is the first part, the first time-wise, you know, implying there are more to come. Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ is the first one whom, the Lord, whom God raised from the dead and gave him his new spiritual body with its Holy Spirit life. The Lord Jesus Christ is the first of God's new creation. He is the new man. Here it says, the beginning of the creation of God. So the Lord Jesus Christ continues and he says to John, these are the things here, I know are new, your works. Again, the Lord Jesus Christ perceives the works, the deeds that were being performed in the church in Laodicea. He knew what was going on in that church. He could perceive it. I know, I perceive your works, that presently you are neither cold, you're not, you are behaving in a manner that is acceptable from one point of view. So these people are neither, or not, neither cold, nor hot. They're not hot, boiling or zesty, which would also be a manner of behaving that would be acceptable. However, the Lord Jesus Christ says, I wish you were cold or hot. Behave in a manner that is acceptable, whether it is the manner that would be identified as cold, but still in alignment with what I'm saying, or a manner that might be identified as being hot, zesty, boiling over. But that would still be in alignment with what the Lord Jesus Christ would want them to do and how to behave. But these weren't, they were neither cold nor hot. And he says, I wish you would be continuing behaving one way or the other. He said, in this manner, because you are lukewarm. They were in between, in the middle. They were indifferent to the words from the Lord Jesus Christ. They were indifferent to behaving appropriately. They were neutral, as it were. Neutral is not a good position to be in as far as behaving for God or the Lord Jesus Christ. 